East Pennsylvania area. Throughout his career, Philip has focused on building healthier communities by understanding distinct community needs, encouraging wellness, and expanding access to quality care. Recognizing the important role health plays in the physical and economic health of our community, Philip has made a particular commitment to expanding employer wellness and occupational health resources available through Owensboro Health. Philip and his wife Crystal have two lovely daughters. Please give a warm Rooster Booster welcome to Philip Patterson. Thanks, Chad. I was relaying to Chad that when I walked up at the Muhlenberg uh, Chamber a few weeks ago, I tripped up the stairs, and the rest of the speech went okay. So that's always a good thing. I'm not sure how this will go. Now, I appreciate all the kind words that everybody has said, and it's really nice to be here a little over a year after starting. It's nice to look around the room and see so many colleagues and so many people that I call friends. No matter what you do, uh, here in Owensboro, whether you're a business leader, a community leader, or just an employee. Doesn't matter where you work, manufacturing sector, the service industry, or healthcare industry, health care affects all of us. It affects you, but you too can have an effect on the health care and the health of your communities. The national health care landscape is getting harder to navigate, as we all know. So it takes us all to educate ourselves and work together to create a healthier, stronger community for Owensboro Health. The ACA, Accountable Care Act, or Obamacare as we call it, um, leveled the, the playing field a little bit, but what it really focused on underneath and what sometimes get lost is, is its two principles of creating healthier populations in our communities and creating access to health insurance for more people in the United States. So even though there's been some other things that have crept up in the issues around the ACA, I think that the principles underneath it we can all tie into. And I think it is important for us to know as we work together we can create a better and healthier community by working through such uh, new structures. Part of that, though, is the community health needs assessment. And the community health needs assessment is a goal uh, where the healthcare uh, community leaders get together and work with the resources and our, our communities to figure out what are the health uh, issues that are most dominant in our community. And it, f it basically focuses us uh, through the expectation of the federal government to address such issues. It's probably no uh, real challenge for us to know that three, the three that uh, really raised to the top for us here in Owensboro and across the region are access to care, obesity, and substance abuse. And substance abuse does uh, consider smoking uh, cigarettes as substance abuse. So I think it's something that we can all um, really get our hands together. But I'm really here to engage you to help me create a healthier community here in Owensboro. And most of you look around and say, well, I'm not in healthcare. But we really are. We're all in healthcare, and it's all our job and our focus. So part of that means you get to participate with me. This is an interactive presentation. So I'm actually going to ask you to take out your smartphones and go to your texting function. And we're all going to set up and text our answers to 22333. So if you'll get that settled in, this is what we're going to do. And then I'll be able to show you how well we actually know our health and our our healthcare system. Everybody ready? A little test question. How do you feel about the recent weather? You loved it and you want more of it? Answer A. My kids really enjoyed the snow days. B. C. It was fun, but I am ready for spring. Or D. I prefer my blizzards coming from Dairy Queen. <laughs> Text your answer to 22333. It'll populate, I hope.
go back a slide. Oh, there we go. One more. Well, this may not be working. I hope it does. Oh, that's it. Aha. See? This is why you have staff that help and love to help you out. First, to get on so that it will recognize your phone, you have to text, of course, Owensboro Health because we're here, um, to 22333. Then you can start answering the questions. I apologize. All one word, no spaces, Owensboro Health. I'm just trying to figure out how I can stay here till 9. I should have tripped. I really should have. All right. So if you've texted Owensboro Health to 22333, you can now answer the first question. I love it and want more. Kids love the snow days. It's fun, but I'm ready for spring. Or I prefer my blizzards from Dairy Queen. I hope this is going to work. If not, we know there's no wrong answer, right? Either way. All right, we're going to hope this is going to work through for the, for the real answers. But one thing that's interesting and one I wanted to call out is everybody knows who Jim Cantori is, the real outlandish guy on the Weather Channel. He actually has almost 300,000 Twitter followers. And this past week, because of our weather, he actually retweeted a picture from Owensboro Health, uh, a sign that was almost uh, inundated with snow that says, keep off the grass. Um, that tweet was taken off of his, off of his Twitter feed uh, 35 different times across the nation and had 90 likes across the country. So we're real proud to say that we made Jim Cantore's national list of Twitter, Twitter feeds. All right, let's see if we can do the next question. If you've put in, hopefully it'll work. Where does Kentucky fall among the 50 states when it comes to health and well-being? Oh, I see movement. Calculating your answers. I probably should give away another Yeti cooler. <laughs> Nick, break. No. Feeding slow. This one. I know the suspense is killing you. We lost our internet feed. free Wi-Fi. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully it'll work out. There we go. We're there. Okay, so where does Kentucky fall among the 50 states when it comes to health and well-being? Looks like a pretty good group of people think that the, we fall towards the bottom level of that. And you would be true. The answer is actually D, 49th. Only West Virginia has poor health in Kentucky at this point in time. The last time this was taken, we were at 47th, so we've actually gone down two. Kentucky, unfortunately, ranks dead last in the incidence of lung cancer at this time and has a two and a half times higher incidence rate of lung cancer than the next closest state, which is West Virginia. So we've got a lot of work to do. And as we remember, substance abuse is one of our three core areas where we lack uh, the ability to take care of our communities. So here's the second one. How costly is heart disease in the United States? $200 million annually, $444 million, $200 billion, or $444 billion? I 
I see a trend. The answer is $444 billion. High costs include charges related to strokes, heart conditions, peripheral artery disease, and hypertension. Immediate and long-term changes include ambulatory costs, or charges include ambulatory costs, diagnostic testing, surgeries, medications, and subspecialty care. So what portion of the health care cost comes from chronic health disease problems in the United States, like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancers, and kidney disease. 25% of all cost, 40, 60, or 75. I think everybody's getting the trend. The answer is 75%. Over $2 trillion annually is spent just on chronic disease processes in the United States. So where we can affect those areas of our community, the better long-term effects we'll have on our own economy for sure. And the last question, how much can a wellness program actually save your business? Nothing over an overall loss. $2 gain for every dollar spent, $4 gain for every dollar spent, or $6 gained for every dollar spent on wellness. The answer is $6. It may surprise most of you, but for every dollar spent, $3.27 of health care costs can be reduced after three years, and $2.73 in absence and lost productivity costs can be saved after a three-year trend of working on a wellness program. These problems cost thousands of lives a year and billions of dollars to the health care industry, but this is where you come in we can create a healthier population and a healthier workforce for all of us here, and the effects will be astounding. So closer to home, we'd like to focus right here in Owensboro. We know that health care is not an overnight fix, and we cannot just slap a Band-Aid on it and hope that it will heal itself. Fortunately for all of us, we do live in a community where we are looking out in areas of transportation, energy, education, and healthcare out to the year 2065. So we know that it's going to take a long-term focus to create a healthier, better, better Owensboro, but we've got the right people in the room and the right people in this community to address our needs. So how can you make a difference? First, let's talk about what is actually population health. Population health is one of the biggest buzzwords right now in the United States and has a lot of definitions, but simply it is a big picture of improving health of a group of people within a certain area. It means healing them when they are sick, but it also means keeping them well and helping them live longer, happier lives. It means creating a system of care that actually helps the health of a population by managing and preventing the long-term care processes through education and preventative care, not just treating things symptom by symptom. Next month, Owensboro Health will roll out the new outpatient division symbol and brand, One Health. It will be led by our medical group but it will also encompass not just the providers in the clinics, but all of our services as we look for new ways to create a healthier community. The Greater Owensboro Health Network is meant to give people one place to look 
to improve their health, whether that's at the workforce, for them personally, their family, or their neighbors. It covers 45 different providers, or 145 different providers in 30 subspecialties in over 20 locations across an eight county Owensboro greater area. So we're excited about the opportunities that we have in coordinating this care and allowing people to access a network that will create quicker diagnostics, collaborative care planning, and a stronger coordination to create a better care process for all. Simply, this is what it looks like. Nothing fancy. Owensboro Health still exists. We have the Owensboro Health Regional Hospital that we're very proud of and the quality of care that we do. We also have a new community hospital which we manage and are working forward to, uh, to for the long, long haul, and that is Muhlenberg Community Hospital about an hour south of here as we look at our region and how we can help to create a better economic and health impact across our region through partnering. The rest of it will fall under the One Health uh, brand. When we unpack it, though, it can look a little bit confusing to you as we look at the way that our system wants to look on the internal side. So actually, all I'm going to do is focus on one core area, and that is One Health at Work. Many of you here today probably recognize this face. It's Kelly Schlachter, and we are proud to welcome her to Owensboro Health as the Director of Employer Health Services. Her job is to reach out to local employers and businesses of all sizes and offer them options on how to improve the health of their workforce. The level of engagement of improving health in your employment varies from what you want and what you think will work for your business. It can be anything from pre-employment physicals and drug screenings to full employment wellness programs and workplace health screenings. And remember from an earlier slide, the more you commit to wellness and follow through, the more you can actually save. When we decided to address population health, we thought about our communities and where to start. And we thought, where else not but the workforce? Other employers, whether you're an employer that has two employees or 200 employees, population health management is something that can benefit everyone. We already partner with over 1,200 employers across the region, offices, professional, industry, service. Doesn't matter the business. We're here to work with you and create a different product so that we can create a healthier workforce that is nationally recognized and where people want to migrate their business to because of the success of you in this room. We're expanding our efforts to partner with local businesses and employees around occupational health and provide services differently so that we can improve the health of your workers. Our expertise covers a number of areas, but key areas of focus are around workplace and process safety and hazard mitigation, wellness education and prevention, management of chronic diseases like diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. But I think it's important to remember that when you treat the work population, it has positive ripple effects on the overall health of our communities because it also has influences on our spouses, our kids, other family members, and our friends. So at Owensboro Health, our mission is to heal the sick and improve the health of the communities we serve. And we first looked at how we as the largest employer in Western Kentucky and the largest healthcare provider in Western Kentucky, how we have to look at ourselves differently. So the first thing we did was remove barriers. We've encouraged employees to be more active by picking up the cost of their memberships and of their employees, the spouses and their dependents to our health park, our medical based fitness facility at Florida Avenue campus. We looked at a different way to engage our employees by incentivizing wellness, by implementing Humana Vitality Program. And the employees participate in Vitality and they earn additional dollars that go directly to their health savings accounts. Third, we use education. We're helping employees and our greater community have better access to healthful locally produced foods through the harvest market. 
our partnership with the Owensboro Regional Farmers Market, which will return for its second year this summer at the hospital on Pleasant Valley Road, is open to the greater community. So as a tribute to Kurt on his last day, I'm going to get towards the end of my presentation by focusing on the top 10 keys to engaging employees in their own wellness. We do encourage you to take wellness seriously, and we know that it will return great things for you as business owners, leaders of our community, and people who just care about the general health of our communities. So Kurt, here's my tribute to you. Number one, start a conversation. The first step of improving health is discussing the need for it. Two, education. In order to react to a problem, people need to know there is one. Three, initiation. Decide to pursue wellness in the workplace and act on that decision. Four, question. Reach out to the people in your workplace to see what they want or need from a wellness program. Five, collaboration. Partner with agencies across our community that can offer you wellness products and services. Six is prevention. Screen for early detection on high-risk problems like chronic disease and workplace hazards. Seven, persuasion. Offer reasons and incentives for employees to pursue wellness and remove barriers they may face or have in their way. Eight is evaluation. Keep tabs on how your wellness efforts are doing and don't be afraid to make changes if they're not doing as well as you want. That works for one, what works for one employee base may not work for another. Nine is expansion. When you find something that works, grow that success. Get more people involved and work to improve the programs even more. And last is reward.